kind of scary up here if you think about it, even if you don't think about it. Hey folks, Dr. Lady in your face once again here in the Mask Fan Attic, home of all kinds of strange and weird and frightening and scary things like look what I just found right here. You ready for this? Boy, you'll have nightmares after this. Whoa, look at that kids. Oh my gosh, is that scary or what? How, how, see it spins, it's, it's a little skull. It spins around and glows and it, not scary? Okay, not scary. Uh, I'll just uh, go back to masks then, shall I? Yes, look what I found here this week in the mask fan attic. It's a mask of none other than Ron Perlman, one of the better uh, latter day horror and sci-fi stars in the role of Vincent, the character that really first brought him to the attention of the public in the uh, television series Beauty and the Beast, which aired from 1987 to 1990. And uh, well, uh, Ron Perlman had been in some other things before, a number of TV episodes and a few movies, including um, Quest for Fire and the Ice Pirates. But Beauty and the Beast, uh, the series, was really the public's first big introduction to Ron Perlman, and he played this, uh, the Beast, obviously. This is not the Beauty, this would be the Beast, by the way. For those of you uh, not paying attention, the Beast, aka Vincent, and he's this uh, this lion man kind of character. And the beauty of the title, his female co-star, was none other than Linda Hamilton, another uh, big uh, fan favorite for her roles in things like the Terminator movies. Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman were in. Beauty and the Beast, once again, 1987 and 1990, and then in 1991, just in time for the show to have been canceled, Distortions Unlimited came out with the licensed collector mask of Vincent. And uh, now I have to, I have to make a confession here, not, not like to a priest, not that kind of confession, but well, similar, I guess. Come to think. Well, anyway, the confession is this one is not quite what they looked like from Distortions. Uh, this one has been painted by me and the hair has been put on by Laura, my wife, for those of you who haven't watched these before and don't know that she does the hair on uh, the masks. Uh, the Distortions version didn't have this nice a hair and didn't have quite this elaborate of a paint job and unfortunately I don't have one to share with you to compare uh, the, the uh, minutia of paint and hair uh, details and so forth. I, I, I can't do that. So anyway, you'll have to make do with looking at this one. Now the mask was out uh, in 1991 and was around not that long, just a couple of years really. And uh, the more common edition, which was sold in uh, places like uh, seasonal Halloween shops and I think Spencer Gifts and places like that carried them, was simply a face mask that was just uh, well, kind of like, uh, almost like a leather-faced uh, type of mask, only t tighter than that, of course, but kind of like a, a, a leather-faced mask in that it just was right around there, just the face made of rubber and just had an elastic strap to hold it on uh, in the back. And it wasn't really very detailed. It was just, uh, you know, a quick sell-through. wasn't made to be a big collector's edition. It was just made to be something for Halloween shops and Halloween parties and haunted house use. But now that version was common. The face only was all over the place in uh, the early 90s. The full head version, I don't know how many were made, but I'm thinking not that many because I don't see it in people's collections too often today. And I didn't really see it uh, around too much even back then. You normally would just see the face, uh, the cheap version that was just the face rather than the deluxe, which had the neck. And this, this you see he's wearing this shirt here. He wore something very similar to this on the show, so again, this was added by us. But the sculpture actually does come all the way down to there. That's the bottom of the latex, but um, uh, we, we added that just as a finishing touch. Now, he did have a similar color of hair, which is to say a light kind of golden brown colored hair. Almost blonde, like a dirty, kind of a darkish, dirty blonde kind of color. Uh, the eyes were cut out on that version, and he didn't have... Uh, hairs glued onto the face like this one does. Laura did that on our copy, but um, the uh, factory copies, the production copies, didn't didn't have that extra hair. They just had the hair on his head, but they were still pretty cool. Not as deluxe as this one, but still pretty nice and pretty rare and uh, significant, of course, if you're a fan of Ron Perlman. And who isn't? 
I ask you. Uh, that's about all I have to say about the Distortions Unlimited Beauty and the Beast Ron Perlman Vincent mask from 1991. So join us here again next week in the Mask Fan Attic and we'll discuss other horrifying, frightening, ghastly, terrifying things. Ha <laughs> ha!